Hey, what's going on? My name is Michael. You guys are watching IDB. I'm really glad that you've been loving the iOS 18 content recently, and we have even more for you in this video. So iOS 18 brings a lot of new features, but with those new features, we also have a bunch of new settings that you have to either learn or change. So that's what I'm gonna cover in this video. I have a list of 10 iOS 18 settings that you need to know about. Let's go ahead and jump in right now. All right, so first up is for messages. So one of my favorite new features inside of messages for iOS 18 is called send later. Now you're able to type out a message and it's gonna send at a later date. One of the most annoying things about iMessage though is you can see all of these apps are laid out kind of weird. Now if you wanna access a feature, it's a little bit annoying to swipe to access it. Luckily, there's something you can do in here that not that many people know about. You can move any of these to the top menu. So if you wanna move the all new send later feature up to the top menu of iMessage apps, all you have to do is simply drag it and place it just like that. And obviously this is gonna work with any other feature as well. So if I wanna have, let's say, a digital touch up here, I can simply grab it and drag it right there. So you can organize your iMessage apps any way you want. And now when you're typing, as soon as you press on the plus, all of your favorite apps can live right there. Moving right along, we have the lock screen toggles. In iOS 18, we're finally able to change these two toggles at the bottom of the lock screen. However, something I didn't know is a lot of you are struggling to figure out how to change these toggles. Some people are asking if you're supposed to tap on them or do some type of swipe. Some people are even digging into the settings app thinking there's an option to change it in here, which honestly would make sense. However, I'm gonna show you how you can do this. So on your lock screen, you wanna press and hold, then you wanna press on customize. From there, you wanna press on your lock screen. And now you are in edit mode for your lock screen. And you can see everything that has an outline, you can edit. So up here at the very top above the clock, you can change this widget to show something else. If you tap on the clock, you can change the size of the font. You can also change the font itself as well as the color. And then if we move down, we can see that these toggles now have an outline. So if you press on the minus button on either one of these, you see we can now tap on plus. We can choose any control to have on our lock screen. I'm gonna choose calculator. Then if I press on done, this is my new toggle for the lock screen. If I press on it, it's gonna go ahead and open up the calculator just like that. All right, next up we have the new dark mode icons in iOS 18. This one also seems to be confusing a lot of people. I have people asking me, how come when I go into dark mode, everything changes like my wallpaper and my widgets, but my icons don't change. They think that their iPhone is glitching or they think iOS 18 is all buggy. However, you actually have to change one simple setting. So on your home screen, if you press and hold in open space, you'll see we have an option at the top left that says edit. If you click on this, you'll see we can choose customize right here in the middle. Now we're gonna have a very small menu pop out of the bottom of our phone. You can see here that your icons are not changing because you will have them set to light mode all the time. You can choose to have them in dark mode all the time and probably the option you're looking for is automatic. When I click on this, you can see my icons have now changed into dark mode. And when I go into control center and turn off dark mode, everything is gonna go back into a light mode, including the icons. So iOS 18 is not glitchy, it's not buggy, it's working exactly as it's supposed to. You just have to make sure you configure your icons appearance settings correctly. Next up is an all new feature for iOS 18 Safari, which is called hide distracting items. I saw a lot of people doing this on Twitter and I was getting kind of jealous because I just couldn't figure out how to do it. So the feature essentially allows you to hide anything on a website. And what's the only thing you'd want to hide on a website? Well, that would be advertisements, obviously. So when I saw this feature, I was trying to press and hold on the ads and I just couldn't figure it out. What you actually have to do is press on the reader icon in the bottom left hand corner. When you do this, you can see we have an all new option right here. It says hide distracting items. When you click on this, you can see it's gonna open up a new menu. It says select an item. So if I simply select the ad and then click on hide, it's going to completely disappear. This is one of the coolest and most underrated features in iOS 18. I'll click on done and I just wanna try it with another website. So I'll go over to this one and this is a very simple website and it makes it very distracting that they have an ad at the top. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Click on this button, then I'm gonna click on hide distracting items click on the ad and then hide. And I like the animation it does too. It's like poof and it's gone. 
So this is a really, really cool feature. I'm glad that I finally know how to use it and uh, let me know in the comments what you think about this. Next up is for battery settings. So I know a lot about iPhones and technology. So for my friends and family, I am known as the tech guy. And I have had so many people come up to me and tell me, Michael, my iPhone does not charge past 80%. Something's wrong with it, it must be broken. I always tell them, open up settings, click on battery, and make sure to turn off optimized battery charging. When you have this turned on, it's not going to limit your iPhone to 80%. What it's gonna do is it's gonna learn your usage over time and it's not gonna charge to 100% until it thinks you're going to need it. So for example, if you wake up at 8 a.m. every single day, your iPhone is not gonna start that charge from 80% to 100% until around 6.30 or 7 because it knows you're gonna need your iPhone around 8 a.m. And apparently if you have an iPhone sitting at 100%, from like 2 a.m. to 8 a.m. That is not good for the battery health of your iPhone. And then if you need to charge your iPhone uh, that kind of goes away from your normal schedule, optimized battery charging may get confused and it only may charge up to 80%. So if this is annoying for you, you can simply go ahead and turn it off. You can choose to turn it off for one day or turn it off altogether. And then up here at the top, this is an all new option for iOS 18. I do believe that this is only for newer iPhones. So I think it's the iPhone 14 and newer, but you can choose a battery charge limit. So if 80% wasn't enough for you, but you still wanna have a good battery health down the road, I'd maybe recommend setting this to 90%. But if you're someone who is always using the battery on your iPhone and you're always down to like 10% or 15%, I'd recommend keeping it at 100. But if you have a very large iPhone, your battery is huge and you're always ending the day with like 50% or 40%, I might recommend setting this all the way down to 80 because the battery health on your iPhone is going to be a lot better as time moves on. Next up, we have changes for the action button. So if you have an iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max, or an iPhone 16 series, you can now make changes for the action button, which can invoke a control. So a control is anything that lives inside of Control Center or any of the options that you have on the lock screen, you're now able to toggle with the action button. So open up settings, then you wanna tap on action button, and you're gonna see we have an all new option right here that says controls. If you press on choose a control, here is your controls gallery, and you can use any of these for the action button. So let's just say calculator, because apparently I love using the calculator on my iPhone. But now when I press and hold on the action button, it's gonna open up the calculator. I'll show you one more. Maybe let's do a system setting. So let's do a dark mode. So let's say you want a dedicated dark mode button. All you have to do is press and hold on the action button, and now you're in dark mode just like this. I think Apple expanding the options available for the action button is a very, very good thing. So if you have an iPhone with an action button, let me know what you're gonna set this to in the comments below. Next up is a very simple one, but this setting is very, very hidden. So I wanna make sure that you guys know how to find it. In iOS 18, you can now have RCS support for text messages. So when you go ahead and open up messages, you may be a bit confused because it still says SMS, but RCS may be turned off on your phone and I'll show you how to turn it on. So you wanna go into settings. Now this is where you might get confused off the bat because Apple has redesigned settings in iOS 18 and if you scroll, you will no longer see the messages app. You have to click on apps at the very bottom and then you'll be able to find messages. So click on messages, then scroll down, then click on RCS, then you can turn it on from inside of here. Now, whenever you go ahead and open up a texting thread with a green bubble friend who also has RCS, it is going to show. You can see it took a little bit to update, but now it shows RCS. And uh, yeah, it's kind of nice that you can now have iMessage-like features with your green bubble Android friends. Up next is for the Photos application. Apparently, no one knows that you can do this with the new Photos app in iOS 18, so I'm very excited to get to show you. If you open up Photos, if you scroll to the very, very bottom, you can actually click this button and reorder your Photos app. So a lot of people think that this is just the permanent order of the Photos app in iOS 18, but you can actually customize it completely. So if you wanna turn everything off and have a very simple looking Photos app, you can do that. I'll click on the X and now my Photos app is very tiny. And then I can also reorder something. So if I wanna move my utilities folder to the very top, 
I can drag it and place it right there. And now my utilities are gonna be closer to the top as you can see here. So I think being able to edit your Photos app definitely makes it a lot more bearable. I still think I like the Photos app from iOS 17 a lot better, but this definitely helps uh, in kind of being able to customize the look of your application. Next up at number nine is an all new focus mode for the iPhone. Now, a lot of you probably don't even know that this is a thing. So inside of Control Center, if you press on focus, you'll see there's an all new focus mode called reduce interruptions. Now, if you're on iOS 18.0 without Apple intelligence, I would say that this is actually the first peak of Apple intelligence that you can get, even though you're not on iOS 18.1. You can kind of understand that by looking at the icon. It kind of looks like an Apple intelligence icon. But when you have this turned on, it's going to use AI to understand priority notifications and junk notifications. So for example, if you're getting a notification from an application like Scrabble, that's not going to be very important. But if you get a notification from a, uh, a friend that's a text message saying the house is burning down, the iPhone is going to be able to recognize that and it's going to send you that notification while hiding or silencing the Scrabble notification. So if you just want to have the system decide what is important for you, I'd recommend having reduce interruptions turned on. And the final thing I want to show you for iOS 18 is Control Center. So Control Center is now finally able to have multiple pages, but you may not know how to actually add another page. So the default layout in iOS 18 is this is going to be your first page of Control Center. Then you're going to have your toggles or your connections page. Uh, mine might look a little bit different than yours. And then your third one may be media playback or home controls. I have changed it up a bit, so I only have two. But if you want to add another one, how do you do that? Well, you simply want to press and hold in empty space. And as you can see on the right hand side, it has now opened up another page for Control Center. So now we can swipe and now we can add anything to this page. So let's say we want this page to be for media controls. So I'll go ahead and grab this widget. And now I can have this in Control Center in my third page, just like this. And you can essentially do this as many times as you want. So if I press and hold, I can swipe. I can add a control to this page now, and you can have as many pages of Control Center as you want. And also another thing that's pretty cool in iOS 18, it's especially useful if you have multiple pages of Control Center, is you're able to access any of those pages with a single swipe gesture. So if I wanna access my final page, which is media playback, I can simply drag and then keep dragging and go to that page right away. And then the final thing I wanna show you is if you go into Control Center, and then you go into your connections page, you'll see that we have an option at the bottom that says satellite. If you press on this, then click on try demo, it's gonna open up an application that you probably didn't even know existed on your iPhone. This application is called Connection Assistant, and you're able to try demos of the different satellite services. So if you wanna try connecting to a satellite for emergency SOS, you can click on this, then you can click on next, then it's gonna ask you a few questions, then you can click on test satellite connection. It's gonna turn off all of your radios, but it's not gonna work because I'm not outside, but it actually is going to connect to a satellite. And you're able to test this out uh, with emergency SOS. You can also test it out with messages as well, which is pretty cool. So yeah, this is uh, probably something that you didn't even know existed on your iPhone, but if you wanna test out all of your satellite services that you have access to, simply go into control center, click on satellite, and it lives right here. So there you have it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something new about your iPhone. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and leave your comments down below. With all that said, my name is Michael. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.